we don't think about just what's best for us. We consider everyone at our core. And this is not just for women. This is all of us. When we truly do what is in our highest good, which isn't always the comfortable thing, it's not always the fun thing. But when we truly do what is in our highest good, it will also benefit those around us and that will ripple out. Welcome back to another edition of Euphoric Evolution. And I'm so excited for today's conversation, mainly because this was a pretty requested topic in one of my highest level groups, and it's timely. In fact, if you are at all on the spiritual side of TikTok, of Instagram, or if you're in consciousness spaces, there's been a lot of talk about this age. And of course, a lot of people are talking about Pluto moving into Aquarius. And while that's part of it, what I'm also speaking about is this period that we're moving into, period nine, in Chinese astrology. And what's really important about this time period that we need to note is that there is some specific opportunity, especially for women going into this age. So first of all, we have to address what is the age that we're coming out of, right? So we're coming out of this period of time where young men (laughs) really ruled, right? We saw a lot of the rise of Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg and things are going to be shifting, right? But when it comes to energetics, I see a lot of people kind of get stuck in this idea that, oh, well, the energy is going to do all the work. No, we still have our own stuff to work through. But of course, uh, the universe is going to bring forth opportunities for us to do so, right? But we still have to do the work. So this next period, especially if you are a woman who's going to be 35 to 55 over the next two decades, this is really like, this is our time. This is our moment. This is our, our time to shine. So what we're going to see is this extremely fast transformation systemically. And this time period is going to carry a lot of revolutionary type of energy. I'm talking about to the degree that we probably can't even fully fathom. Like obviously shit is not working, right? I think we can all agree that (laughs) it's not working and everything does seem to be crumbling very quickly, but we're also going to see things be built up relatively quickly. And why it's so crucial and why I'm having this conversation with you today is because ultimately what we need is for conscious women to be ready for this age and to really be mindful of what is necessary for us to not only succeed, but also what's necessary for all of us. Because when conscious women actually step into their leadership, it's not going to be every single woman, but there are some of us who are called for this period. We literally came here at this time for this period to introduce new ways of doing things that are more equitable, that are more mindful of everyone and inclusive in considering everyone's well-being, right? So what we're going to see at this time is a really huge increase in the possibility of visibility, right? For the possibility of women who are in this I don't want to say middle-aged, but it is kind of like middle-aged. I'm about to turn 35. So saying that I'm going to be middle-aged is, does it feels weird. But if you're in this age, I guess that's what we'll call it. <laughs> but this is really your time to shine. So huge opportunity for you to be recognized for your insights and your ways of being to be even more valued. And we're going to see the rise of prominent female leadership. You know, I look around a lot of spaces and even in the spiritual space, like no hate to the men that have come before. We don't see a lot of the top leadership, even in the spiritual space, identifying as 
woman, right? We don't see that happening very much. There's like, we could probably count on one hand. So huge opportunity there. Also, during this period, we're going to see a decrease in our ability to be pressed or impressed by material just for the sake of materialism, right? So we're going to be really examining overconsumption and, you know, how things look versus depth, right? So we're going to see this rise in the value and, and how we value purpose and passion and our connection with spirit or our essence, right? We're already starting to see this shift, especially with younger generations like Gen Z and my son's a Gen Alpha. And these kids are, <laughs> I say kids, but even if you're Gen Z, not a kid, the way this next generation is rolling should be very inspirational to us because they are prioritizing being human and prioritizing life and living and expression, self-expression, right? Over just accruing and hoarding as much as possible, right? Now, this doesn't mean that you need to go in order to be a feminine leader and become a pauper and not enjoy nice things. Obviously, you know, <laughs> I enjoy... <laughs> I enjoy nice things. My Taurus in uh, the 10th house, got my Jupiter there, got my Mars there, right? I love me some luxury. However, it's going to be more about the experience of things versus the acquiring of things, right? We're also going to see in this time period, an increase in tech and a lot of innovation. And I know that so many people, especially spiritual teachers, I, I see are nervous about that. And yes, everything has a shadow side. However, on the flip side, this rise in tech is presenting us with this opportunity to really explore, well, what does it mean to quote unquote work or create without having to for survival? And we're going to have to reconsider how our entire society is structured on working to survive, right? We are going to be seeing a shift towards actually pursuing and creating from purpose even more. And we're going to see those who are not pursuing things from that place starting to struggle more. And it's going to cause, well, it's already causing, I see it every day, it's causing these identity crises because if your entire identity is wrapped up in the work that you do to survive and now you can get to a place and and I'm very hopeful, maybe too optimistic, but I am hopeful that we will get to this place where the miracle of your birth by itself is valuable and your existence here just by being here is perceived as valuable and that we get rid of the idea of like, you need to be a slave to the wage. So I see that technology in this next two decades is going to be so incredible for giving us more opportunity to be more creative, more innovative, and more in touch with spirit, which seems weird when you talk about tech allowing for you to be more connected to spirit, but that possibility is there. I'm saying the possibility is there because it is a possibility. It doesn't have to become the reality if we each don't play our part in this. The other thing that this time period is really going to be bringing through is that this is going to be a time for action. Now, if you are a feminine leader, you're probably like, but I'm tired, right? This is why we're seeing so much of the increase of like, soft girl life and trad wives and we desire more ease and more flow. We can have that. It can be both and, but what we're going to be seeing is that it's really going to be, we are going to be creating, right? And that does take action. It does take action to take massive inspiration and then turn it into something. Now, if you are new here, you're like, okay, so who is this Makosi chick? Um, <laughs> why should I listen to her? What does any of this have to do with anything? Well, I can tell you that, well, at least why I think you should listen to me is that number one, I've created a very successful seven figure business and I've worked 
with incredible conscious visionaries, some of them seven and eight figure entrepreneurs, uh, C-level executives. I've worked with uh, celebrities as their spiritual mentor and guide. And this really is my calling is to support leaders to step into their conscious calling. And many leaders now, maybe you as well, have been experiencing what I call the void. I teach a a lot about this concept called the void, which is this period in time where the identity that you have built up, it turns into essentially a prison in your own life. And ultimately, the goal is to really embody the identity of the version of you that you are here and called to be and really step into alignment with your calling. Now that sounds really nice and <laughs> lovely, but the truth is is that it is a journey that can be very challenging. And so I bring this up because that is what is necessary for you if you are called into leadership in this time. We are going to see yes, this rise of the feminine. Now, we can take that literally, right? In that we're going to see more feminine leaders, right? Getting more recognition and publicity, right? I've been very blessed to be featured on some really incredible platforms like Entrepreneur and Success Magazine and all the major news outlets and the doctors, right? And we're going to start to see more leaders in those places, right? As like the norm. So that opportunity is there for you. However, Those opportunities do require inner work. So in our conversation, I've just jotted down some of the things that you really want to be mindful of identifying how that's showing up in your life right now, but also getting a hint to what themes are going to be popping up for you to work through. So as a feminine leader, you know what, let me pause on that because you know what, even if you're not a feminine leader, if you are called to leadership, even if you identify as a masculine bodied being, (laughs) you are going to be called to integrate with your yin aspects in this period. So we are also going to see more male identifying leaders also having to deal with this work because we all have both of these aspects in us, some of us more so than others. So the first thing that I want to talk about is with this opportunity for more recognition, for an increase in your reputation, for just more visibility on women in this age period. Well, guess what that means for you? You get to work on your fear of being perceived. This one, this one really gets me. Number one, this is my own work. So guilty raising my hand. This is one that I am for sure challenged with and consistently working through different levels of this. But this fear of visibility is actually a fear of being perceived. And we as a collective are not going to be able to move forward if we don't have feminine leaders who are able to be perceived. So if you just stay hidden, (laughs) then obviously it's It's going to be hard for you to receive the recognition and, and, and. Now, the scary part, at least for me, first and foremost, the judgment of what the people you care about think of you. Strangers is one thing. Getting hate online is another thing. And that can be very triggering, especially when thousands of people are commenting, (laughs) right? That's one level. But also it really starts first with moving through your fear of being perceived by the people in your life. This is so difficult for women because so much of our identity is wrapped up in who we're connected to, in who we love, in our ideas of, oh my gosh, is this this gonna make it difficult for me to find a partner, right? Or to make friends and so on and so forth. So this is like one of the biggest things that I've been working on with clients, but that I just see across the board. This also is a collective pattern that we get to work through together. 
because for literally 2000 years, we've perceived women as existing solely to support the destiny of her partner and her children. And I am here to tell you that even if you do not embrace or understand the concept of reincarnation, which that's a conversation for another day, (laughs) but women have their own destiny. We don't come into existence solely for everyone else. We have our own gifting. We have our own genius. We have our own callings. Now, sometimes those callings are very much to support those around us, right? I don't want to downplay that, especially I'm a mother myself. Part of my calling on this planet is for sure to mother in a very specific way, because from my perspective, my son chose me. But I've been in a lot of spiritual spaces where there is a concept that the woman's entire existence is just to sacrifice. And so we take on and build these entire identities around how much of ourselves can we give up in order to do as what we see as being supportive to others. We've got to understand, especially moving into this next period, that our innate way of being takes others into ourselves. Now, there are for sure (laughs) women who have experienced certain kinds of trauma and have like molded themselves out of that way of being, recognizing that. But at our core, we consider and take the holistic and we take the community into our decision making, into our thoughts, into how we make decisions. We don't think about just what's best for us. We consider everyone at our core. So when we, and this is not just for women, this is all of us, when we truly do what is in our highest good, which isn't always the comfortable thing, it's not always the fun thing. But when we truly do what was what is in our highest good, it will also benefit those around us and that will ripple out, right? The ripple effect will happen. But if we continue during this next period to people please and sacrifice all of ourselves to the point where we have no energy to give to our calling, to the inspiration that's coming from spirit, guiding us to bring forth new ideas, new systems, new businesses, new art, and so on and so forth, we will all pay the cost of that, right? So as a collective shift out of this idea that you should be completely sacrificing yourself, and then hopefully you have two minutes at the end of the night for yourself. No. That has to end. Another thing that I'm seeing is time for us to break some of our patterns around our lack of (laughs) boundaries. Now, there's a lot of discussion around boundaries. Really, really, people are just talking about putting up walls. And that's not what I'm talking about. In fact, from my perspective, I talk about scaffolding a lot in a lot of different ways, this concept. But if we think of boundaries like scaffolding, there are these very solid parts to it. And then there's lots of room for flexibility in between, meaning there are some ways of being that you be first and also that you require those around you to also embody. And this isn't you going and trying to force anyone to be, no. You just observe how people show up. You communicate when needed, right? But it's not that you're trying to make anyone be or do anything, but that there's lots of room for humanity in between. But boundaries are so important in this next period because what I'm seeing as a more leaned back observer, I don't usually call things out, but there is an energy of tearing female leaders down to a degree I do not see happening to men, not even close. And 
humans are going to human. We can be spiritual and see the potential in others and, and hope for the best. However, when you are a feminine leader who is called in this next age, your work is very important and you are here to be the guardian of it. So we are going to need for you to be your warrior self when needed because the pettiness and the jealousy and the like absolutely warped expectations that come with just being a woman, we have to be mindful that those exist and make sure that we have boundaries, that we have protections, that we have contracts in place. Okay. We need to be on point about our business in this next phase because people are going to even unconsciously see you stepping into your calling. Some of them knowing that they are called, but feeling a sense of shame and guilt that they aren't showing up to the degree that you've shown up and try and do everything in their power to tear you down. This is just reality. I'm not going to sit here and like sugarcoat anything. And so I'm not saying go and expect the worst from people, but also just be aware <laughs> that we all have humanness, right? That we all have the capacity for bitterness, jealousy, frustration, anger, all the things, right? And we don't want you getting limited by how other people are showing up. The next thing that I feel really, it does apply to all leaders, but we are going to see an even greater emphasis on the need for self-awareness in leaders. In fact, it is the pathway to your calling, to being in your leadership, in leading yourself first and foremost. From my perspective, self-awareness is the greatest tool. It is the greatest wealth. When you are fully aware of your strengths, of your weaknesses, of you know how different experiences are showing up in your life to mirror yourself back to you, and you're able to take accountability and take that responsibility for your role, not taking everybody's ish as your own, but being able to recognize your role and where your power is. This is how we're going to be able to create the world that we want to see. It's funny because I scroll through the TikTok. <laughs> Sound like an old lady. Through the Tiki Talk. And um, we have this understanding that everything that we need exists within us. It does. And also, we have been so indoctrinated that most people don't know themselves. We, like It's already difficult <laughs> to know yourself. But when you exist in a culture that doesn't support you coming to know yourself, right? Like how many of us as children were given space and opportunity to actually explore our interests? No, we had a, a linear curriculum from point A to point Z from every turn we were, we were told, oh, you need to go to school for this amount of time. You need to study this to be valued. You need to, everything has to be about making money. Never mind your hobbies, unless you're going to be good enough to make money from them, right? That is all by design. And so, yeah, most people are experiencing a massive awakening and shift. And that awakening has to do with identity. That awakening, yes, does it start with you seeing externally all of the crazy stuff <laughs> that's going on in the world. Yes. But you're seeing that because it is reflecting back yourself. And so what is required is a journey back to the self, a journey of shedding the masks and the layers. I was sharing with some, some of my Synarchy clients yesterday on our call about how transformative I recently did I had my colors draped and it was a very different <laughs> season than what I thought. For any of you who are in this world of color seasons, all of this time, well, first I thought I was a dark autumn because I have like a warm overtone 
Then I thought I was a dark winter. And then I get draped. Come to find out I'm a soft summer. And man, I had this like sigh of relief, lots of crying, because it was the first time that I realized like my whole life, I thought that I was this intense, bold, edgy rebel, like in your face. And this is not to say that I'm not, because listen, I got some, (laughs) I got a bite and I have a little bit of fire, not a little bit of fire. I got a lot of fire, got a lot of Mars energy in my chart. Okay. But also I felt this like grieving for my inner child who was a little brown girl who didn't feel safe being soft and being introverted and awkward because I've always been that. And who knew that having your your best colors draped on you would be, would be like that. But, you know, that's the deeper level of something that seems just material, but there's depth and meaning to it. So this journey of self-awareness doesn't stop, right? But it is manifesting. The opportunities are manifesting in our reality for us to navigate. And they are manifesting as obstacles. Every single one of those obstacles that's showing up in our lives is presenting a big fat opportunity for you to step into your next level, your, I say next level, but I know that automatically people think that that means it's better. It's not necessarily better. It's just truer, right? It's just the more true you. And that feel good just to even think about. Last but not least, one of the biggest opportunities for feminine leadership evolution is really transforming the relationship with money as a woman. Now, this one is not so much about money for money's sake. It is recognizing that wealth is a resource. And if you're called into feminine leadership, if you are called to step into your queendom, then you are going to need resource to play your role, to do the things. I'm recording this podcast right now. And guess what? I have a team (laughs) and that team has family and they got to eat, right? So allowing ourselves as leaders to be supported, that's another one. I didn't write that one down, but that's another one. (laughs) Allowing yourself to learn how to be supported instead of solely being the support for everyone else, but also allowing money as a resource to support you to go forth and bless others who have gifting and are here to support your work and also express their gifting through this co-creation process. I don't do this alone. In fact, I got so much support. I am so grateful and so blessed. I have an amazing team and at home I have an amazing husband supporting me and a son mostly supporting me, sometimes hating (laughs) on my YouTube channel. You know, but also someone helping with my laundry, someone who helps with cleaning, which allows me to have more time and space for creativity and to be creating this. And so the only way that I could have done this and also can go forward and finally publish my book, it's written, (laughs) y'all. The book is written, but it takes resources to pay the teams, right? And to get it printed. It's not coming from nowhere, right? But the only way that can happen is when you learn how to allow yourself to receive more. And whatever more means, it's going to be different. We're not all here to live the same existence and to want the same things. It's going to be really important that you give yourself permission to receive what's true for you, right? Like the massive mansion on the beach with the fabulous car outside and the designer handbags, like that's not going to be everyone's experience that they truly, like truly desire, but it's not wrong to desire that in some of us, that is the experience we're here to have. For others, it might be, you know, buying your farmland and having your cows. And that is how that manifests for you. 
And maybe for you, it looks like investing in cool gadgets and that's your thing, right? It's not about making one right and the other wrong, but really exploring and understanding what is true for you. So I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you enjoyed it, please share it with another feminine leader that you know needs to hear this message, that it is your time and it is her time in this period. And the only way that we are going to see the world that we wish to see is by stepping up to the plate. That's all. I'll see you next time. 